Hi, my name is Josh Zander. I'm the teaching professional at Stanford University Golf Course and at Presidio Golf Course in San Francisco. Today I want to talk about the one plane downswing. But before I get into that, I want to clear up a misconception. A lot of people think that a one plane swing means the shaft is staying on the same plane the whole time. That's not the case. When Jim Hardy introduced the concept of a one plane swing, he simply meant that at the top of the backswing, the left arm and shoulders were all on one plane. This would be a two plane swing where the left arm is on a higher plane than the shoulder plane. As I describe the one plane backswing, you'll see that the one plane backswing is actually on two planes, as is the one plane downswing. Let me show you what I mean. I have an inner circle here and an outer circle. You can think of the inner circle as the lower plane and the outer circle as the higher plane. Let's review the one plane backswing. As I take the club back, my right arm is the top arm and my left arm is the bottom arm. I'm on the inner circle or on the lower plane. As I take this to the top, the left arm becomes the top arm and the right arm becomes the bottom arm and I'm now on a higher plane or a second plane which is basically the outer circle. You can see how that wouldn't be a good way to start the one plane downswing. There are two things you need to do to make sure the one plane downswing is effective to help you, effective to help you compress the golf ball. Let's talk about those two things. The first move in a one plane downswing is to make sure you're moving the center of your body forward of the golf ball. So I'll show you from the face on angle as I set up to this golf ball and I make my one plane backswing. I'm now going to move my center forward and down. You're going to start to see my left knee lower, my right leg start to lengthen. I'm moving my center forward of the golf ball to make the bottom of the swing happen past the golf ball so I can compress it. As you're doing this, you have a role for your arms and club, and that is to get back down to the lower plane. Remember, when we got to the top of the backswing, we were on a secondary or higher plane. It's your goal now to move the handle back down onto the inner circle or the lower plane. How do I do that? I reestablish my right arm as the top arm. So I get to the top of my backswing. I'm on my one plane position here with my left arm on my shoulder plane. I move my center forward and I reestablish my right arm as the top arm. You can see how nicely this club would come into the golf ball and compress the golf ball and really hit a nice solid golf shot. So once we've established a center that's past the golf ball and a shaft that's gotten back down onto the lower plane, we can compress the golf ball. Let me show you how to get to the finish from there. So here I am making my nice one plane backswing. I move my center forward, I move the handle back onto the inner circle. There I am at impact. Now how do I get out of this forward bending position? From here, I'm going to thrust my pelvis forward and slam my thighs together. In slow motion it would look like this. I'll go ahead and hit one. Notice at the finish of my swing, the closest thing to the target is my belt buckle and the front of my thighs. I've gone from this flexion position here to full extension where my rib cage is up and back my belt buckle is close to the target and my thighs are closest to the target as well. Now let's look at the one plane swing from the down the line point of view.